I wasn't someone who grew up reading comic books. I'd read the big graphic novels, but I don't think I truly appreciated the art form until my friend Robbie showed me a comic he'd written himself called Stan. That's when I discovered there's a whole community of local independent comic creators right here in Calgary, Alberta. Today we're going to meet some of these artists and community organizers and chat about why comics are such an awesome art form. Hi, I'm Jess and this is Crafting Community. So what are comics? Comics are an art form that uses sequential storytelling to tell a story. There's an intended order to how a comic is organized. Comics can use any combination of words and images to convey a sense of time and motion. Comics are usually organized into single frames called panels. These usually have a border, but not always. Panels can be any size and filled with words, images, speech bubbles, or anything. The space between two panels is called the gutter. The gutter is where a reader's imagination fills in the blanks that connect panels together. A page can be made up of multiple panels. When an image takes up the whole page, it's called a splash. When it takes up multiple pages, it's called a spread. Comic creators use these visual elements to guide you through their stories, but comics are so personal because you, the reader, are creating the time and action and emotions through whatever connections you're imagining between the panels. Comics are a unique art form that rely on words, images, and your own imagination to create a story. Comics are for everyone. Comics are a, a medium now. I, I think the word comic book gets um, tied up a lot in like superhero stuff a lot of the time. And uh, so it's often a surprise to people that the vast majority of comic books have nothing to do with superheroes. Just the most popular uh, mainstream comic book companies exclusively sell superheroes, but there's comics for everybody. It's just like a novel. So if you like books, if you like stories, you'll like a comic book. There's every type of story you can imagine. I think a lot of people are comics fans. They just don't realize it yet until their eyeballs sort of hit that thing and something sparks in their brain. And they, I'd say a good 30, 40 percent of our customers are people that walk through and look around at an expo like this and go, oh my God, I, I didn't even know this world really existed, yeah. right? You know, uh, everyone's familiar with Marvel comics. Everyone knows Spider-Man, everyone knows Batman. But uh, a lot of people don't realize until I walk through one of these for the first time that there's a whole artistic community making this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a story for everybody here somewhere in this room. Everyone loves superheroes and all those kinds of things, but there's a lot of really interesting, intelligent, heartfelt stories that are coming out every single day and like, there's so many different approaches to what a comic could be or how you could be representing it. Like, I don't know. I've seen them from so many different styles, from so many different types of artists in so many different ways that I feel like people could really embrace comics as like an entirely different like art form, entirely different medium. I really think uh, comics are just like movies in the way that all of us have movies that reach us and that resonate with us. It's just a matter of finding the ones that do. And comics are exactly the same. Uh, it's just a matter of finding that creator that speaks to you. I would like to see more people discover their love for it again. I think it's a rediscovery process. I think people find comics when they're young and then they sort of put it down as like, oh, this is like kids stuff. And I think having more adults understand that there really is work out there for them and like having kids understand that there's, there's room to like play and collaborate and make it like if not a profession, a hobby that really energizes them? Well, for me, I know like storytelling is, is like hugely important because like it's all about like sharing a message. Um, and um, comics are the perfect thing for that. Um, and anybody can make comics, right? So like I could, I could make a comic with like a ballpoint pen, just like anybody could. And then your, your story is like there, it's right there. You know, you don't necessarily need a big studio or a huge collaboration. All you need is like a little bit of like courage and uh, you know, the uh, willingness to kind of put yourself out there or your story out there. 
It's like there's a, <laughs> there's a comic yeah. for every interest. Yeah. Yeah. And every hobby too. Yeah. There's comics for cooking and recipes. Like honestly, everything. Yeah. It's just another way for human beings to share stories and the most important thing that human beings have ever been able to do is share stories with one another. So it's a really accessible medium. Yeah. Uh, that you can, yeah, you can literally do whatever you want in them. They're incredible. There's so many things that are special about comics as a medium. I was kind of just talking to someone about how our story couldn't exist in really any other context because we have a we have a really specific color palette in ours that's these like these teals and these pink tones. So in our present storyline, we kind of have these teals and these pinks to build that establishment. And then when we jump back into his memories, it's these like purples and these magenta tones, but it's actually the same inks laid over top of each other to make like a different perspective. Um, so it's like a way of doing like a visual representation of what memory is. And that's something that couldn't really exist in any other context or any other form. But comics also give you the ability to slow down sequences and to really like focus in on certain sections of like what something is occurring in that space. So it's a really good way of making visual representations of like memory or sexuality or identity or all those kinds of things. And it's something that can exist in any other form or at least wouldn't work in the same way in any other medium. Comics are much more, in my opinion, can be so much more personal and they can be much more introspective than other mediums because you don't have to finish a comic in one go. You don't have to binge the whole thing. You can stop the story whenever you feel like the pages feels right with you. And there's a certain level of satisfaction of knowing that you can always go back and reread the same comic and take more like get something out of it more or notice details that you may not have seen to begin with or take a comic a panel at a time like there's no there's no rule set as to how you'd have to interact with the comic and quote unquote finish a comic so with that being said I think taking time with a comic whatever that means is a good way for of convincing people to give this medium more of a chance and not think of it as something that needs to be put out quickly so something else can come out of it. I think because you're pairing words with pictures, people think that, oh, it's easy and like there's not much depth there because it's so easy to understand. And really, I think it's like a great medium for breaking down really difficult concepts and also uh, embodying concepts that are otherwise like hard for us to talk about issues around pain and health and personal stories and then also yeah these things that like you really need the visuals to, to translate so it, comics like comics can do a lot of the heavy lifting for a lot of topics. I'd say the special thing about comics as a medium is probably the fact that you are really only limited by your imagination so whatever wild worlds and situations you want to dream up, uh, the sky is the limit. Even if you want to tell something that's true to life, autobiographical, or something that's absolutely cosmic, science fiction. Um, and, and there's something really interesting that happens with comics, the, uh, the interesting play that happens between an image and a word, and how they contrast or complement each other, and the interesting little connections that you can create that only comics can do which is really exciting. Yeah. It's a unique fusion of some literary skills, because you have to have good writing, uh, good storytelling skills, and uh, a visual meaning. And one of the things is it engages the, um, engages the imagination in a different way than other stories do. Uh, so one of the things about a comic is if you look at it, you, these uh, squares are called panels. Uh, and in between the panels, those are called gutters. And what makes a comic totally irreplaceable is the real action in a comic happens in the gutter. Your brain perceives a piece of art, uh, and then it perceives the next in a sequence, and as you cross that panel, your imagination does the work. So in your brain, you see a guy holding a sword, and the next panel you see a guy with no head and the guy's still holding the sword. Your, your brain transposes that into action, but it's not really action, it's a unique thing. Uh, and it's also a different kind of a storytelling medium from a writer's standpoint in that um, that old adage about a picture being a thousand words is true. Uh, and you can tell a story, a writer, and write a big script and have no words in the comic. Uh, it's all about telling the story visually. Uh, and uh, there's nothing else that really does that. 
Uh, it's either moving you know, stuff on film or animation, uh, or it's gross fiction where you do all the, or it all happens in your imagination. Uh, so there's nothing quite like it, you know. Comics allow for a page to be its own finished piece, but also to be, to fit into a larger narrative that keeps you wanting to turn the pages and feel as if you're uncovering a story as you go. That's my favorite part of it. A comic book has this materiality that like um, really shows kind of like the progression of the story literally as you like look through it uh, unlike movies or like you know all of this where like you, you can kind of if, if you want to start a comic book and read it from the back like you can like see the story progress backwards you know what I mean and like vice versa and I feel like that on itself is makes it unique. I think the diversity in the storytelling and the fact that it's three different types of narratives that are married together. You have, you know, the words, the pictures, and then what they convey together. So it activates your brain in like a completely different way. Initially, Panel One first got started at a thing called the Calgary Comic Creator Summit. And there was discussion about how there should be some kind of group that was promoting everybody and then maybe would throw a festival like this because we had all attended expos in the past and expos are great but they get really expensive and they get really easy to get lost in because everyone has this arms race of massive displays of, of fan arts and prints of Deadpool so original comic art was just almost impossible to find let alone uh, create and sell there so our, our founder and previous president Aaron Miller decided okay enough talk she was just going to actually do it and she sent out a tweet and said okay we're called panel one and if anyone wants to help put on a show be at this coffee shop and myself and a few other people answered that first call and um, there's still a couple of us left from that initial group but Erin has since moved uh, to be a librarian following her dream across the other side of the country and uh, I, I did my best to step in and fill her shoes as best I could but yeah so it's been seven or eight years I think now since that initial tweet went out Panel One at its basis is a focus on celebrating comics as a medium, not as a genre, which is a pretty big and important distinction um, to be made. I think it can often be placed as a genre. So we're looking at graphic storytelling, sequential storytelling as a medium. Um, where Panel One is different and where it excels is in its commitment to both accessibility and inclusivity. So we focus on not curating the, the membership, not curating the content that we support necessarily. We want to provide as wide a range as possible in order to encourage most entry-level um, participation as possible. Community is fundamental to Panel 1 as well. So that's a, a huge aspect of what we're trying to create here is providing connection between people who are creating comics. Creating comics on its own can be very solitary even when there's a writer and an artist, even letterers or colorists uh, participating together to create one comic. But often each of those individual activities is created on their own. Um, it's not that we're necessarily changing that model, but we want to give people the opportunity to have discussions and to add personal connection to their work um, in the form of social gatherings or sketch sessions, other workshops, and of course our yearly festival. And the cool thing about this festival is you know that people are coming here specifically for original work and to see what uh, Calgary and Edmonton and Saskatoon has to offer when they come here to sell their books. And so it takes a bit of pressure off, but in the same regard, you're surrounded by incredible creators too. So you're still kind of like, oh man, how am I going to make my mark here? How am I going to, yeah, sell myself? Also, I love, like, especially at festivals like this, where you can see people's growth. Like, totally. anyone who has a book can have a table. So you can see people from their beginner stages. And then we have people here who are more seasoned. And it's really cool that you can keep coming back to this year after year and you see people's growth, which is really, really cool. I prefer these, like, what they call comic art festivals as opposed to comic cons because it's about the comic creators and there's nothing else. And so it's the comic creators connecting with readers, connecting with fans, whereas the comic cons, there's uh, and nothing against them, but there's a lack of personality to them. It's all about the celebrity guest. It's all about the TV guest, the movie guest. And um, it's kind of, uh, as a result, the comics thing is on the back burner. 
and that really leads to um, a place where you kind of don't feel so much welcome. And again, I don't mean to put that in a, I don't mean to give a, a, a bad light on those shows because they have their place and they're great. But this show and like TCAF and Bancaf, they are so much better because you are connecting with an audience that really wants you to be there, that uh, really wants to be there with you. Um, so I think it's a real gem that Calgary has. There's a lot of growth that's happening constantly. So I think it's the fact that we have events like this and we have spaces for local creators to like push out their comics, to share them with people, to get more people knowing that there's a different way of approaching writing and a way, different way of approaching art that's also accessible. Uh, Cause that's a big thing too with about comics is that it's an accessibility thing too. So like more people can understand comics than they could any other literature book, right? It gives, it gives us an avenue to, uh, to talk to one another and to hang out with each other and to maybe share ideas and collaborate. Um, it's, it's definitely more about community than anything else. And um, that is, it's hugely important, I think. It's gratifying to see the diversity of creators as well that we have. It's not the comic book guy of The Simpsons, uh, as far as the eye can see. We have people from every walk of life all gender and sexual identities it's just it's a, a, a wonderful thing to see especially in a province like alberta where we tend to we have a reputation let's say i think comics are also unique where they speak kind of to um everybody and it is a really diverse community but any artistic medium can use more diverse voices and like so events like this are fantastic if it envelops more um lived experiences uh, displayed through art. I would love to see um, uh, events like this grow because, uh, yeah, the perception, yeah, the perception is superhero comics and Marvel movies, which is fine. Like, that's great. I like superhero comics, but there's so much more heart and, like, there's more of a creator in their creator-owned stuff than there is with playing with toys that someone else made. When I teach uh, at the university, I do tell my students, uh, as soon as you can, start finding other people who make comics, uh, joining uh, community associations like Panel One, because the community is here, and it really depends on new people coming in and sharing what they're working on. Um, and I've, because I've been doing this for 20 years, I've seen the community kind of like build up and then kind of go quiet and then build up and go quiet and i really do think right now is one of the busiest and most exciting times uh, and this festival really is evidence of that if you've got a story inside you and you were wondering how to share it comics are the best way to do it and there's so many different kinds of ways to do it that uh, don't hesitate just start making and start showing people that work and yeah have fun <laughs> yeah. start small because if you start with a, a project yeah. that's too big you'll chances are you'll never finish yeah. it but if you can start with something small like a like a mini comic or whatever just it, you don't have to spend your whole life fretting over it and yeah. creating it and then once you have one thing made you can build off of that. So if you look at it when you're done and go, ah, oh, this is terrible, at least you can see in your, you, you can figure out why you think yeah. it's terrible and improve on it. So everything is a step in yeah. the right direction. But like you said, if you don't finish anything, then and you're screwed. So. Don't necessarily jump for your big epic idea, the idea you can see in your head that's worthy of Marvel, because it might actually be worthy of Marvel Comics, but you might not be able to tell that story or draw that story or write that story yet. Yeah, you have to figure that out for yourself. But uh, start small with your story, too. Uh, you know, if you've got a big epic and you know, sometimes you just know you have a good idea. You know, if I told this idea to the right person and we got the right actors in it, we could have you know, a big blockbuster movie or whatever. Start with a small, short story related to that or something like that. And start with a small story and don't, don't expend all your talent uh, on your big epic until you've learned a few of the ropes. Uh, you know, at the same time, don't sit on your big story forever because uh, part of being a creator is to always learn how to come up with new ideas, you know, so. Like, just start doing it. You're not gonna, like, sucking at something is the first step to being good at it. 
honestly. Oh yeah, absolutely. Just put pencil to paper, basically. Like, yeah. um, and you don't have to be an artist to draw. Like, I've seen comics done with pictures. You can go take photographs and collages, mm -hmm. and there's just a lot of avenues you can discover. Yeah, you could sign up to specifically panel one online. Coming to events like this, like uh, going to local comic shops and just going to the local, like you can go to, specifically in Calgary, I mean, you can go to another dimension. They have an entire section just of local creators, you know. Oh, I didn't um, know that. Reach out to any of them on Twitter or Instagram. And like, again, like it's a really friendly community. Everyone is, um, everyone always feels like, oh no, I'm awkward and, and shy and stuff everyone in especially this medium like kind of feels the same way and so there's a lot of camaraderie in that and like you should never yeah just like if you have any interest in making a thing put pencil to paper yeah. put grab like grab your ipad do whatever you want if you're starting from total scratch my recommendation is try to find somebody to talk to first um you know, hearing from an artist or a writer's perspective about how they got started might give you the traction you need to start taking those steps and creating your own. Um, and then dedicate 10 to 15 minutes every every day, every other day to just creating and see what happens from that. Well, I think you should start by talking to people, like coming and talking to artists about what comics are how they're approaching them, you know, how they're challenging that medium is the best way of getting into something because it shows you that like, there's a million different ways to tell that story and to like approach it and to get into it. When I got into comics, it was like really something I only knew kind of on its sidelines. I was like really into Vertigo comics. I was really into like some superhero stuff, but I didn't know that you could really challenge that medium and really like push it to its highest degree and be willing to like, throw the book out the window and say something brand new. And um, I wouldn't have learned that if I wasn't going to these kinds of things and like talking to other creators. So that's kind of why panel one is such a important thing, right? Take it slow. And uh, it's natural to be a little bit afraid. Um, and you don't necessarily need to share uh, right away. Uh, just make sure you're comfortable, you know, uh, expressing your stories uh, with yourself first and sl slowly work your way up. And before you know it, you'll be making, you'll, you'll have a bunch of comics that um, you will be willing to share just because you'll have so many. Um, so just, just get started and, and try not to be afraid about what people think. Just do it for yourself first and foremost. The advice that I would give for somebody starting out a graphic novel would be knowing um, what are you trying to tell? Because like at the end of the day, it is a storytelling device and if you just want to make cool pictures, you can make a painting. Like, you know what I mean? Comic book is a sequential form of art that like, ha like is a storytelling device. And so like, I feel like what makes a graphic novel good is the story, you know what I mean? And so that's like the cornerstone of any, any graphic novel is to have a really great story and find out why you're trying to tell those stories. What is the reason, you know what I mean, of like, you making it, why is it not about a different subject matter? You know what I mean? Why is it about that specific subject matter? Um, figure out what genre you want it in, you know what I mean? Because like, as I said, it's a storytelling advice. It's like saying, oh, how do you make a movie? Like, you know what I mean? There's so many different types of movies. Like, you know what I mean? There's like horror, comedy, you know what I mean? And so you can like know what genre of that. I would say a, my piece of advice for someone who's struggling is always going to be to trust in the initial feeling that led you to even think you wanted to create anything. Because that feeling is trying to express to yourself and others that there's something of value that you want to share. And I think leaning more so on a positive angle of wanting to get something out is always going to be much more helpful than focusing on the obstacles, the traps in place of an industry that's as big as comics. My advice is to start small. So if you're going to make a comic, everybody's got that huge idea that you want to make. Um, and usually if it's like too big, you're just setting yourself up for disaster and disappointment. So what I always say is start with a one page comic. And once that's done, you've got one comic page under your belt move up to two pages, then move up to three, 
and just keep sharing those comics and learning. And uh, yeah, copy other comic book artists you love. Uh, watch a movie that you love and try drawing that scene as a comic and you'll just learn so much from that. This is my life's passion as putting this show on and creating, try to create the space for everyone to exist and share their work with each other because comics are the best and the people who make them are the best. And uh, I just love it. I can't put it into words, but once you, once you get it, you'll get it, you know? I think comics are often misunderstood. They're not just superhero stories written for kids. When you sit down to read a comic, you're using your imagination to build an entire world beyond what's on that page. And comic creators are using visuals and text to help guide you to tell the story in a way that is personal to yourself. And there's so many diverse ways of storytelling within the realm of comics. So look out for stories created by people in your own community. You might be surprised about what you can find. And if you want to tell your own story through comics, just pick up a pen and get started. You're only limited by whatever is in your imagination. So until next time.